Hi guys, uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction and sort of a what's in the box um, plus a couple of little samples of this new action camera, HD camera that I bought. Um, I'll mention first and foremost if you want a really in-depth review of this same camera and what it's capable of then uh, after you've watched my video of course check out uh, the video by Techmoan T-E-C-H-M-O-A-N uh, user on YouTube. He does lots of tech gadgety type reviews and, and camera reviews and what have you and it was through watching his reviews that um, that I, I decided on this camera as opposed to a Drift HD camera which is considerably more expensive um, and the the reasons will become clear once once I kind of tell you a little bit about it. It was ordered from a website called Chinavasion.com, and um, and it came quite solidly, sturdily packaged, and well wrapped with sealing tape with its uh, shipping instructions. Inside there, you've got the UK plug adapter, three pin plug adapter, and this box, which is a nice snug fit inside there. And on the top of the box you have this picture here and all around there's various dramatic scenes depicting its usage for action and a plain white bottom there. So opening up the box you get a lid at the top which has a HDMI cable, a full HDMI to mini HDMI. An instruction booklet which is uh, comprehensive enough to give you everything you need to know. Diagram of the camera, how it works and so on and so forth. It's even a use useful section here showing you uh, how you can utilise each of the mounts uh, because this comes with a vast array of mounting options which is quite nice. Um, these are the kind of things, um, in fact it comes with a vast array of, of wires and cables and mounting options and these are the kind of things that cost you extra with things like the Drift HD. This was just over £100 from the China Vision website and then the import duties were in the region of about £16 I think. So, but bear in mind the base model of the Drift HD that I was looking at is some is around sort of 175 pound plus shipping cheapest i found it anywhere on top of that you will need to buy yourself an external microphone and any additional mounts that you might need so anyway we'll just continue with this we open the box inside we have a charging lead which fits into the uk adapter we have a TV out cable with a little two and a half mil jack and then the usual sort of APAV plugs. We have a, um, a USB lead for pulling off the data. This will also charge the camera while it's plugged into the PC. Uh, in there we have a, a sticky 3M um, sticky foam pad and then some sticky Velcro. Uh, this also had the battery but that's currently in the camera. And here we have an elasticated strap with the with one of the additional mounts. I've already fitted this up to this mount. And something that's good about this, it's got um, a rubberized coating inside. So that means when you wrap it around a helmet, it will grip and, and not slip because that was a concern that I had when I actually saw this on Techmoan's video. I thought, well, an elasticated strap on a motorbike helmet, for example, you know, it's, it's quite likely to slip off. But no, it's, uh, it's rubberized, which is quite, kind of cool. Uh, you get a microphone with a little tie clip and two and a half mil jack and uh, there's no covering on that so I've, I've tried it without and I'm, I'm going to see if I can fashion a bit of foam to act as a bit of a wind buffer but it's not bad as it is. You get an in-car charger with a very very long lead. I've not unraveled that but you can see that's ridiculously long. In here we have a handlebar mount. Uh, it's entirely metal construction. You get this rubber sleeve here, but this, the whole thing, as you can see, is metal. But the rubber sleeve with a couple of rubber damping pads at the top, sitting on the top there. Um, I still think this would be subject to quite a bit of vibration on the handlebars of a bike bouncing around a bit. But uh, I don't know, I'll probably give that a try at some point and see how that fares. Uh, although the main use I'm intending is, is as a helmet sort of cam. Uh, but we'll see how that goes anyway. So yeah, that's that can be used on bicycle handlebars or anything tubular. Uh, the other mount, which isn't in here, uh, it's currently suckered to the car windscreen, is a very sturdy plastic 
it's like a sort of reinforced plastic sucker mount which has the same same kind of um, clamp as this one here which clips into the bottom of the camera and, and a, a sucker mount with a, a cap because it's quite a sort of sticky it's a strange soft rubber sticky sucker mount and it's absolutely solid I've got that sucker onto the car windscreen at the moment and that thing will not budge an inch it's, it's fantastic um, and that's got a swivel base so you can twiddle the camera to suit finally in this little section here we have the camera itself so there's the camera You've got an LCD view screen on the back with a little protective uh, label. You've got the lens at the front there. And you've got these little sort of grippy bits at the side which is handy for holding if you just want to hand hold it. And then at the bottom you've got uh, a microphone hole which oddly doesn't seem to work very well because the sound seems to go in the back. And this is something that Tecmo mentioned on his video, one of the first things I tried. And it does indeed, if you open the back, you suddenly... Um, much clearer on the speaking it's very odd this screw here apparently works as a heat sink you've got a, a brass tripod thread which is good a nice sturdy tripod thread and then these these slots here are what uh, your mounts slot into I'll show you that on the headband mount in a moment and then you've got a speaker back here for previewing your videos you've got three buttons on the top mode on off power button and a record button uh, your mode switches it between camera video camera and into your menu and then on the back uh, actually I, I'm t uh, that's a fib there your mode just switches it between camera and video camera on the back you've got a menu button um, a back and forward and a play pause button which are, do obvious things when you're scrolling through your videos but these are also used for scrolling through your, uh, your menu and selecting options flip up this good sturdy clasp fold down the back and inside you have a TV out you have a microphone in, a little in-use um, LED which glows blue when it's recording and red when it's charging. This is your battery door which twiddles and lifts up and inside is a battery. This is a generic sort of camera battery, get that the right way up. And you can see it's a Fuji NP120 battery pack. Now if you Google, uh, or Google, if you, if you go on eBay rather and look for the Fuji NP120 battery, you'll find you can buy those for about £3 um, from eBay, which is an absolute bargain. So you can get yourself a couple of spare batteries. The battery life is supposed to be quite good on these. I've yet to try that. Uh, below the battery door, you've got a, a full SD card slot. It will accept up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, but a 16 gigabyte one, uh, the, the one out of this camera that I'm filming with currently, uh, which is a class 10 16 gigabyte um, and works perfectly. Um, a 16 gigabyte one will give you something like four hours worth of video um, in this camera, which is frankly, I think, more than uh, you're ever likely to need. For most uh, instances, you've got an HDMI out port as well down here and your USB port for charging and pulling off data. Um, and then once that's clipped shut that gives you watertight housing to show you the mount there's the clips and the slot in at the bottom there the one for the car is exactly the same and, uh, and this mount can be used as an additional one if you if you just need those extra maneuverability options but you slot that in like so and then uh, which way we're clipping it there we go until snap that forward until it clicks and that is absolutely solid and then as I say you can wrap that around a helmet and you can fit this either way facing that way or facing that way um, in addition to this there there is a uh, another uh, mounting option which seems to be missing I must have misplaced that when I repackaged it but it's a, um, a velcro uh, sort of cordura type strap which you could use as a wrist strap as uh, as a sort of shoulder uh, mounted strap or as it shows in the magazine for fitting through the vents on the top of a bicycle helmet so you can fasten the camera to the top of a bicycle helmet threaded through these little slots on the bottom and uh, something else about this one if you look at this it's got a slight curvature to it so it's obviously designed to sit on a curved surface or has the option of sitting on a flat surface because the edges are flattened so that's quite a nice little touch I think
and the base just snaps off and this uh, this mount also has a tripod mount on the side so you can you could you've got various different mounting options you've got uh, quite a lot of a lot of the hair so yeah you so you've got various different mounting options um, and you've got a great deal of variety and I can't think of a single situation where you'd struggle to find a mounting option with what's supplied in the box um, the camera itself weighs somewhere in the region of 185 grams with battery and card installed which is probably heavier than some but to be honest having fitted it to this and, and put it on my head which I'm not going to do now because you look like a bit of a wazzock um, it doesn't feel that heavy and I honestly don't believe that uh, you'd notice it greatly if it was fastened to a motorbike helmet for example so that's the unboxing portion of it um, I've got a couple of clips that uh, just brief clips that I took in the car one was um, on the way to work using the built-in microphone and what have you um, initially with the back closed and then with the back open and then the other one was on the way back and using the wired microphone and it does make a considerable difference the next check that I want to do with it is is actually fastened to the bike helmet or something similar with the wired microphone into the helmet and the drift hd ticked all the boxes albeit uh, slightly expensive and uh, certainly over the gopro which frankly costs more than the drift hd looks to me like a cheap chinese toy camera and um, and doesn't have a view screen unless you buy the the pack which fits on the back of it and then you know all these optional extra accessories and the footage from the GoPro I've seen looks excellent don't get me wrong but uh, it's very very expensive for something that just doesn't look that professional in my opinion so yes I was all set on the drift HD started watching some some reviews having watched a few tech moons sort of less um, less technical camera reviews I was I was kind of thinking I'm probably not going to find anything suitable and then I watched the review on the Crocolis and thought well you know that's not bad if only the sound was a little better and then of course linked to that was this one and having watched it and, and the instant that I heard the the microphone test I thought that's it and, uh, and off I went and ordered it so certainly worth a look at if you want an action camera with a microphone in option with reasonable sound with excellent quality video um, and uh, it's quite a good looking camera to boot with numerous mounting options then so far I can recommend this it's easy to use and uh, yeah I like it it's pretty good This bit of audio right here is recorded because the onboard audio recording just didn't work out clearly enough for anybody to hear. Essentially what I was saying that is that I was testing the, uh, the camera in this direction with the onboard microphone to see what sound could be picked up and shortly I will open the rear door you'll hear uh, obviously a lot more noise. So this is the uh, return journey, we're headed the other way and this time around I have the external microphone plugged in. Now what I'm hoping to hear when I play this back uh, on my computer is that uh, I've got good footage with reasonably clear sound without too much background hiss and crackle and rattle and general noise and what have you. So uh, fingers
fingers crossed that that will be the case and um, we'll just see how we go from there. And also worth mentioning is I noticed on a couple of initial tests yesterday that um, the standard exposure seems to expose more for the sky. I mean, it's quite feasible. It's just, just uh, it, it was just an aim issue, and there was more sky than anything else, and it's obviously going on um, on an out and overall average. Um, but it did seem to underexpose for the foreground a little, uh, although the sky looked great. Uh, again, as mentioned in Techmon's video, um, he noticed when he when he did the um, gaffer tape to his bike test. Um, so what I've tried doing on the video, uh, the the previous video, the exposure compensation was pushed up two stops to 0.7, and the exposure compensation for this video is pushed up three steps to 0.1. So it's one full stop uh, overexposed, and I'll see what that looks like and how that comes out. And, uh, and if the exposure looks good on that, I can kind of juggle about uh, a good average between them. Oh, steady man, what are you going? Okay. It's not a clever place to roll back onto a road. Just as a further test now, I'm going to wind down the window and see what kind of effect the wind noise has on the microphone which I've currently got clipped to my shirt. Right, so that's the window wide open. Um, I'm trying to get a rough idea of how the wind noise might still affect the microphone when it's fastened inside my helmet for on, on bike speaking. And hopefully this will give me a little bit of an idea because there's, bound, there's going to be a little bit of wind whistling around the place, even with a helmet. So. Uh, We'll see how that goes. I might have to make a little foam battle for the microphone and see what happens. One last little thing, um, as I was packing this back away, uh, the Cordurus Velcro strap I mentioned was actually hiding down there in the box uh, for some reason. I wasn't seeing it, but there you go. It's um, it's not stretchy, it's not elasticated, it's just a Cordura material. Uh, it's a Velcro strap, but as I say, you can use that to fasten it through these smaller loopholes here. Uh, in any orientation you see fit to anything that you can fasten it to. I do want to do another portion of the video showing you some of the operation and some of the bits and pieces that I do like about this. Um, however, I'm limited at the moment because I'm waiting on a new card because the, the card I did have in this I've currently got in the camera that's filming this. So obviously um, I, can't, uh, I can't do both. I, I need to wait for this new card to arrive. So as soon as I get the card, I'll do another little video showing you the functions and features and the things that I like particularly about it uh, for, uh, with, the, with the intention of buying it for motorbike use. And then, um, and hopefully we'll get some onboard footage from the bike with the uh, cam, uh, with the um, microphone wired into the helmet, and uh, and see where we go from there.